good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today on another Tuesday press conference with the Senate Republicans. It's uh, good to be joining you all virtually and in person. And today, the topic of uh, the press conference is going to be education and specifically parents' rights in education. And this week is teacher National Teacher Appreciation Week, so we've got one teacher with us today. So grateful. Thank you, Representative Lyman, for joining us. And really grateful to all of the teachers out there and uh, for the work that they do with our children. It's incredibly important work. And today's uh, press conference really is highlighting the importance of that work and the importance of collaboration between parents and uh, and teachers and schools so that we can get the best outcomes for our children in education. So quoting uh, Public School Review with Grace Chen, she wrote, schools and teachers benefit from parental involvement because involved parents develop a greater appreciation for the challenges that teachers face in the classroom. Communication also helps to dispel any mistrust or misperceptions that may exist between teachers and parents. A nationwide Gallup poll conducted in 2022 found that 55% of respondents are either completely dissatisfied or somewhat dissatisfied with the U.S. education system. According to the National PTA and National Coalition for Parent Involvement in Education, parent involvement is the number one predictor for student success. And that, that type of um, research continues always. Um, parents are the number one reason for a child to succeed in school and in life. Parental involvement leads to better classroom behavior. Schools and teachers benefit from parental involvement through an equal partnership, especially school systems that build capacity and training programs for teachers and parents. And what we're seeing in the schools here in Maine is very concerning and shows that we need greater parental involvement, not less. Statewide, graduation rates fell 87.4% in 2020 to 86% in 2021 and 2022. Chronic absenteeism ballooned in the 2021-22 school year to as high as 40%. Maine parents report that nearly one in four children, ages 12 to 17, experienced anxiety problems were with higher rates exhibited in females than in males. Some districts, as we have heard, are facing accusations with intentionally hiding information from parents. And yet, very tellingly, the Maine Department of Education whole student approach that they are pushing as the model of education intentionally omits families and parents. We need laws that reaffirm parents' fundamental right to the, be the primary decision makers and caregivers of their children. Maine education system has lost its way, taking on too much authority for itself as the experts and leaving parents who actually have the ultimate authority sidelined. And with this, uh, with that, I'm going to introduce uh, Senator Libby, who is our lead on the Education Committee, and to talk about some bills that they have uh, based uh, basically around this issue. Senator Libby. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Keim. Um, yes, I'm Senator James Libby, and I'm here today to speak about an issue that is of the greatest importance to uh, Maine citizens, not just Maine Republicans, and that is that in the schools that parents be included in conversations about their children. And so recently in um, Maine rulemaking, the Department of Education passed rules that expand the ability for school social workers and school counselors to go ahead and keep information confidential between them and the student. And in effect, what we're doing is we're, we're deciding somehow to treat students as if they are adults and treat students in a way that does not include their parents in decision making. Uh, so uh, we find it quite ironic, frankly, that um, we're keeping that level of confidentiality um, in the treatment of um, difficult problems that students face. So for example, um, student has a, a chronic drug problem. 
what is being said to Republicans and Maine citizens is that that student will be able to keep that problem confidential. And what we find to be especially ironic is that part of the law, this is the exemption in the law, I'm going to read it to you, if there is clear and imminent risk of harm, then that information should be um, given to the parent about the child. Well, when is there no imminent risk involved if a child is on a hard drug or if a child has a severe uh, mental health illness or some other issue that is uh, creating all kinds of stress in their lives? Um, it is, the law that is, is pertains to maybe one or two or three percent of the cases where there really are issues perhaps with the parents and in my school district I've seen a few parents um, maybe a parents in um, incarcerated maybe the parent has a drug problem there are cases there are exceptions where it's critically important to allow the counselors to have that kind of um, secrecy between them and the student but not many and we shouldn't legislate to those few so given the fact that um, things have gone in that direction, we have a case here in Maine, a case study that we can look at. It involves a woman by the name of Amber Levine, and she has sued the Great Salt, community, uh, Great Salt Bay Community School because a school counselor gave her child a breast binder without her consent and counseled that student on gender transition. So. The issue here is, should that kind of counseling go on without a parent who, is, um, who has been, by the way, to many of our education committee hearings and probably will be in the State House today? Um, should that actually happen? And we don't think it should. So uh, the, the rulemaking that just passed really should have had an opt-in clause for parents. I think Republicans might have supported it if it had an opt-in. So in other words, the parent, uh, at least one parent, signs a consent form and says, yep, it's okay with my child to go ahead and have confidential discussions with them, and you don't have to include me. But that's not the way um, that, unfortunately, that the Democratic Party wants to go. And uh, this whole idea that we're not going to include parents um, it's, it's disturbing, it's distressing, and it's something that we have to stand up to. Um, so we have a number of bills, fortunately, coming up um, in the Education Committee, Education Cultural Affairs Committee this week, and one of them that I'm especially proud of is um, offered by Senator Kime, and it is LD1800, an act regarding parental rights in education. So I'm going to turn, actually, um, the, uh, the microphone over to Senator Kime so she can talk about that. There's several other bills as well um, that really bring the parents in, you know, back into the fold where, where they belong. And so, Senator Kime, would you speak about that? Thank you, Jim. Yes, yeah, so uh, LD 1800 has a public hearing on Thursday. So really, and there's other bills also that are going to be important to transparency and parent rights on Thursday. But LD 1800 is an, a an act regarding parental rights and education. And really, this is just reaffirming uh, the parents' fundamental right to the care and upbringing of their children. So it is parents who should have the, the ultimate say over their child's education, their health, and their welfare. And we cannot have school systems setting up rules that would allow the school to circumvent parents and um, and like what's happening in the Great Salt Bay School. That type of uh, medical treatment should not be allowed to children without their parents knowing. So, so this bill is just saying that the parents uh, have to be notified, they have to give approval, they're going to, you know, it really goes into providing them forms and setting up procedures so that parents aren't left out of uh, a mental health or crisis that their child might be going through. There's no reason for parents in that type of situation to be left out. And parents all over the state of Maine and all over the nation are speaking out saying they want to have 
more say in what's being taught to their children. They want to have opt out on um, any sort of, sort of uh, mental health uh, counseling and those types of things. It really needs to be a collaboration between what's happening at the schools and what's happening at home. We can't have schools setting up uh, systems that pits a parent against the teachers. It's really important that we change that. So I know that um, there is a, maybe another bill or two in the Education Committee on Thursday as well, and uh, Representative Sampson was going to uh, mention those. And I forgot to say that Senator Libby is also a teacher, and as National Teacher Appreciation, we also want to thank you for the thank work you. you do as well. So Representative Sampson. Thank you, Senator Kime. And I, I thank my colleagues in the Senate for letting me join in on this very important topic of parental rights and um, the issue of the education system and children and parents. The whole issue is so vitally important and that parents have, it, so you did tell me, you did say what my name was, right? So I'm Representative Heidi Sampson from Alfred. <laughs> and I serve, I'm the Republican lead on the Education Committee and uh, parents, have every right to request any information being put in front of their children. When they act on that right, they are often shocked and dismayed that important information is frequently hidden from them, as we've just heard. Across, across the state, taxpayers, parents, and concerned citizens have been met with increasing resistance and even hostility from school boards, administrators, and even teachers in some cases when they request information resources and materials put in front of their children. Republicans stand for parental rights and have a number of bills that support the rights of parents to have control over their children's education. We've heard Senator Kimes' bill. I actually have two bills and there are several others on this issue from a variety, coming from a variety of, of directions. Uh, my bill in particular, the one that I want to highlight is LD 1129, an act to enact the Curriculum Transparency Act. Lots of acts in there. We need to act on this. <laughs> it's provided, it provides that children's rights are parents' rights until they are 18 years old. Children's rights are parents' rights until they are 18 years old. It will provide greater access to information that will lead to an open discourse. If schools have nothing to hide from the public, there should be no objection to increased transparency and parental involvement. If schools demonstrate genuine transparency and clear communication, there will be less strife and angst at the local level, and we may even see better academic results. And thank you. Thank you, Representative Sanson. Um, go ahead. No, I don't need to say anything. All right, well, um, we definitely want to leave you all knowing that um, Senate Republicans, the, 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 uh, the Republicans here at the State House, we value teachers and we value schools and we believe that quality education is of paramount importance. Main schools need to be a place of collaboration between parents, teachers, counselors, and other school personnel. We need law that reaffirms parents' fundamental rights and that places parents firmly in charge of their children's upbringing, education, and overall well-being while respecting and valuing the roles of teachers and schools. So I thank you all for your time and attention today, and I hope that this uh, will get many of you out to speak on the bills on Thursday. We want parents there uh, and teachers and working together on this and finding a path forward that, that works uh, for all of our school kids and schools. Thank you.